Hi, welcome to your practice. My name is Dominic. For today's practice, you'll need a yoga mat, a couple blocks, maybe get some water, and then meet me in a comfortable seat and we'll get started. Now I say a comfortable seat, but that's gonna vary depending on body style shapes and what people actually desire. So. I'm sitting in a hero pose with my hips towards my heels. You could be crisscross applesauce or you could be sitting on a block. Any one of those would be fine by any stretch of the ima imagination. Really the intent here is that you want your spine to be long. Sometimes we like to collapse and round forward. So tilt your pelvis slightly forward. Now with the pelvis tilt forward, pull your shoulders back like you're trying to make your shoulder blades touch. It's going to force your sternum forward. Now pick your head up like you're trying to sit up tall so you reach the crown of your head towards the ceiling. And in doing that, you can feel your spine get long. Take a breath in. And a breath out. Take another breath in. And a breath out. If you haven't done so already, place your palms face up on your lap and then let one hand rest in the other like you're holding your hands within themselves. And close your eyes if it feels safe and comfortable to do so, taking your attention inward, starting to focus on a little bit of that center, that part of you stillness that often gets overlooked because we're busy and we have a lot of things going on. And today's practice is going to be a physical one. It's meant to generate some heat, just like the sun. It's meant to put some fire, some rajas, as they call it in the, uh, in the yoga land. But we like to balance that energy out with a little bit of softness. A little bit of tamas, a little bit of inertia to kind of slow down the momentum because we aren't meant to run at full speed. And if we get the recipe right, if we mix the energetic, the high energy with the low energy, we might eventually arrive at a place that we know is balance this place that we get to visit because the conditions are constantly shifting. So we're gonna start to move our breath a little differently. For now, you've been kind of letting the breath naturally flow and I want us to intentionally move our breathing. So we're gonna do a little bit of Aloma breathing or this kind of stepped up breathing. And we're gonna focus on the inhale to kind of match what we're doing physically, energetically. And so I'll give you an example and then I'll explain my example and then you'll do it. So it goes something like this. So a Veloma breath is a slow, stepped approach. If you were imagining your breath to be like sipping on a straw, a regular inhale is a long pull on a straw, right? Like if you just took a big sip in through your straw and all in one fluid motion, just like I did my breath a moment ago, that's what you would get. Veloma would be like taking a little sip and then another sip and then another sip until your mouth was full, and then exhaling, or in this case of my analogy, swallowing. So we're gonna couple, try a couple rounds of Veloma breathing. We're gonna do five, five steps. Now five steps don't work for you because you haven't built it up yet in the body. Then work up until you're full. So, and I'll count, I will do the counting and you do the breathing. Take an inhale to prepare, normal breath. Exhale. In, 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 hold. 
exhale, let it go. Kind of feel how you feel for just a moment. Preparing round two. In, in, hold, and then exhale. We'll come up on our third round of five. Now it doesn't, you don't have to be perfect if it's not exactly five. Fill up the breath. In, 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 in. Maybe in one more time. Hold. Nice. Start to bring your body forward. If you're sitting with your hips on your heels, your legs might be feeling some type of way, so tap out the tops of your feet for me. Give yourself a little bit of a break. As you come into quadruped, tabletop, all fours, look down between the hands, look at where your knees are, and see if you can line them up with your wrists. Bring your hands about shoulders distance apart if you want to measure that. Push into your the heels of your hands and spin your fingers towards one another until your middle fingers touch. Spin your fingers back forward and that'll give you a general measure. Notice if your elbows are sticking out wide. Pull them in. Support yourself. A bent arm is harder to support yourself than a straight one. So push into the mat. Tuck your toes under. So put your big toes so that they're kind of gripping the ground creating a flex through the front of your feet. Send your tailbone high. So curl your butt up towards the ceiling. But lift your head and look forward. Creating a bit of an arch in your spine. Can you get more lift? Can you pick your chin up a little bit more? Pick your tailbone a little higher. Push into your hands a little firmer. Nice. And then as you exhale, Tuck your chin into your chest so feel your shoulder blades pull apart from one another. Bring your tailbone long so draw it towards your mat. As if you're making your back nice and big like a mad kitty for, cow, for a cat pose. Then inhale. You open. Exhale. Move around. getting as much out of this as you need to making it the way that best benefits you for your practice today good work everybody next time you're through your cycle of cat cows pause you can keep the toes tucked for this but I want you to start to make circles. Keep your arms straight as you can, but circle from your shoulder, your left shoulder, over to the right, and then back around. And so you can drive this motion from your hips, right? So move your left hip to the left, move your left shoulder to the left, and then sweep everything over to the right, and then kind of get that circle. And keeping the arms nice and straight, bringing the head forward of your wrist, you'll get a bit of stretch in the wrist as well. Nice. Kind of go the other way. You went clockwise, the spin of time as we call it. Counterclockwise is the spin of the planet. Both are needed to kind of create the conditions. Keep rev revolving that we call life. Next time you revolve back around the center, turn your fingers to the left and right side respectively and find a little bit of that same motion of going left and going right. Sweeping around, finding that circle, and on and so on and so forth. Right, waking up the wrists. If you wear watches like I do, you might actually press buttons on your watches like I just did. 
And so if it helps, you can take your jewelry off at some point in practice. That can be useful, but not always required. All right. Pause and center. Turn your right fingertips towards your right knee so that the wrist of your right hand faces forward. Keep your left just like it normally would be. Start to rock your hips back and pull or peel the right palm off of the mat. We're going to find some circles here. So next time you rock forward, sweep your right hand up. Rotate it all the way around, and as it comes back forward, turns the right, turn the right fingers forward. And then we're going to do the same thing for the left side. Flip the left hand so that it faces towards the left knee. Same setup, drop the hips back just a smidge, about an inch. Then sweep the left hand up, rotate it all the way around, spin the left fingers forward so you come back to your tabletop position. Reaffirm your strength here, set everything down nice and strong. Send your right leg straight behind you. Flex your right toe, so push your right big toe into the mat. Then rock your heel forward and back, just like that. Get a little bit of length here keeping your spine as long as possible. Now pick up your right leg, and the way you're gonna do that is by lifting up through your right quad and squeezing your right glute, pushing through your right heel. Keep all of that energy. Trying to keep the head, the shoulder, the hip in one line. Maybe rotate your right hip slightly down and turn your right big toe just a little to the left. Now take your whole right leg, sweep it over to the left back corner of your mat. All right, just rock here for a moment. Pick up your right leg, sweep it as far forward as it'll go without you shifting too much weight into your left side. And then put your right big toe back towards that left corner. And just like you circled your wrist a little bit, circle through the top of your right foot. Snap, crackle, pop. That might feel some type of way. If you want to go the other way, it's a little awkward, but see if you like it. And then come to tuck your right knee nice and firm behind the left. After you do, turn your right foot and your left foot out to the sides of your mat and then push down through your shins and the tops of your feet. This is where your block can be handy. If you want to use it for support, as you start to come into this kneeling position in the Gomukhasana legs. Ooh, this is a nice one for the thighs. Squeeze everything, right glute, thighs together, all the nice stuff. Take your hands up, push your fingers up towards the ceiling, drop your head back. Look up. Take a full breath in. Stabilize on the exhale. As you exhale, let the hands come to the block if you used it for support or come all the way down. Nice job. Uncross the right leg. Come back to your tabletop. Tuck both your feet under and move your knees closer to your wrists. So shorten that distance a little bit. Take a big inhale and as you exhale, draw your navel in and up. Draw your ribs down. Lift your knees slightly off the ground and hover. Shift your weight from left to right. Keeping the knees high, shift your weight left, come onto your right fingertips. Look up to the ceiling or sky, reach your right hand up. Bring your right hand down. Restabilize. Inhale, take your right hand up. Bring your right hand down. Put your knees down. Untuck your toes. Soften everything for just a moment before we get into this next side. If you'd like to take some more cat cows here, you can. Starting to open up to your inhales and to your exhales. Ever so slightly. Breathing in, breathing out. Just taking this moment to recalibrate because that's what it is. It's, it's really all a recalibration. An opportunity to begin again because that's what our practice presents us with. Resetting, getting everything nice and steady. Pause from your cat cows. Extend your left leg long behind you. Come onto the ball of your left foot. 
if you want to find that rotation, rotate off the ball of the left foot. Rotate, ro rotate, <laughs> rotate through your <laughs> left ankle a little bit. See how that feels. Nice job. Lift your left leg up. Really find that same engagement. Squeeze your left glute. Push your the back of your left thigh a bit higher. Point or flex your toes. Either way, make a decision about how to engage the legs. Each one kind of acts slightly different. Sweep your left toes over to the right back corner of your mat. Find a little bit of pressure there. A little stretch through your left hip. Pick up your left leg. Sweep it all the way around to come to the front of your mat as far forward as it'll go. Shift your weight back to center. Keep lifting up through the left leg. Sweep it back behind you. One more time. Lift. Sweep. If you got blankets in the way like I do, kick them. <laughs> Sweep behind. Again, tucking the left knee nice and cozy behind the right. We're coming up to that kneeling gomukasana again. It helps to push down and squeeze in the legs. Then from there, pull the navel up and in and use that energy to bring you to your kneeling shape. Reach your hands up and overhead. Find a bit of lift here. Grab opposite wrists or elbows. Twist your sternum slightly forward and push your head back. Don't lose the squeeze of your legs and your glutes and all of the things in the lower half of your body. As you exhale, let the hands come all the way down. Uncross the legs. Nice. Shorten your tabletop. So bring your knees forward again. Tuck your toes under this time. Keep your hands spread apart, nice and strong. Remember what I told you about letting your elbows go out to the sides. Don't want that. Pull them in. Good job. When you're ready, push into your hands. Start to peel your knees off of the ground. Drop your head between your arms. Come into this shortened version of downward facing dog. Keep the knees bent here. So keep the heels lifted. We're gonna find out how much you're pushing into your hands in just a moment. So drive down through the index and the thumbs, both of your hands, lift up through the center of your palm and then engage the remaining fingers by pushing down. Look forward towards the hands, lift your butt even higher. Shift your weight forward. As you exhale, bend your arms, lower your head down, and then straighten your arms. One, shift back to dog pose. Lower the knees down. Take a moment, see how that felt. That was a truss exercise. You might've tried one of those and freaked out. We're gonna go for two more. So we're gonna do the same thing again. See how it feels. Try not to let your elbows go out to the side because they're going to want to. So you have to peel it back in. All right. Knees forward. So shorten tabletop. Tuck your toes under. Drive through your hands. Pick your knees up. Come into that dog pose. Dog pose is where you set. Look forward. Keep the elbows in. Shift the weight. Think chaturanga. Lower head down. And then straighten the arms. One. Shift the weight. Lower head down. Bend the arms. Straighten the arms, shift weight. And for good measure, because I said two, but I meant three, shift the weight, bend the arms, lower the head, straighten the arms, push the hips back, put it all down. Feel the burn in your arms. That's nice. You came here to work. I told you it's a fire. It's a spicy one. We gonna do some stuff today. So look, if you need to pause the class, play with this a little bit. Don't worry about getting it all done fluidly, right? Just keep showing up and the progress will come. Trust the practice, they say. Be intentional, they say. All true statements, they say. But the only way you're gonna know that is by getting into it and trying it yourself. We're coming to downward facing dog. Let's go ahead and tuck your toes. Lift your hips up and back. Step your feet out lengthen your dog right drop your head between your arms and soften your jaw and your neck bring your belly your 
gaze up to your belly button straight so lift up by pushing into the hands bringing the ears into the shoulders send your tailbone a little higher lift your heels up there you go downward facing dog beautiful job take an inhale round forward straighten out your body so you come into a plank pose keep the shoulders separated keep the push in the hand squeeze the inner thighs together lovely exhale bend the arms keep them close to the side think chaturanga inhale straighten the arms shift forward bend the arms straighten the arms drop your knees down drop your forearms softly onto the ground look to the front of your mat and then on your inhale slide yourself all the way through to upward facing dog tuck your toes under come up to down dog reset your down dog at the same time pick up your right leg lift up to through your right quad squeeze through your right glute point through your right toes find a bit of lift in your left foot on your exhale step your right foot outside of your hands a bit wider than your mat put your left knee down straighten the right leg bend the right knee as you straighten the right leg send your hips back in space as you bend it pull your chest forward look forward back and forth back and forth nice nice job everybody next time you come forward stay there now depending on your flexibility we're going to take some lizard push-ups so you're going to keep this right foot nice and wide where it is if you need to lift your left knee to get some more space great the other way you can get space is by getting your blocks and putting your hands on them so let's i'm going to take the lifted knee variation meet me there if you want pick up your sternum push off the ball of your left foot to Get a little more lift in your chest. As you exhale, bend your arms, lower your chest down. As you inhale, straighten your arms. As you exhale, bend your arms, lower your chest down. Straighten your arms. Final time, shift weight. Lower your arms or bend your arms, straighten your arms, lower your knee. There we go. That's not complicated at all. Nice, you can move your blocks out of the way if you were using them opportunity here always an opportunity plant your left hand firm sweep your right leg long and behind you open up find your modification for your side plank look up towards your right hand as you push down into your left and you reach away with your right maybe you even pick up your right leg really if you re re-engage it nice and firm and strong look forward towards the top right corner of your mat pull your right knee in and step your right foot back outside of your mat tuck your left toes under lift your left knee up match sides put your left foot to look like your right drop your hips pick your chest up there you go active squat nice and steady driving through the legs here hands at heart center or reaching out in front of you. Either one is fine. As you exhale, push into the legs, straighten them. As you inhale, reach your hands up, take up space. As you exhale, sit it back down. Find the, that engagement of the legs, right? And if you can find little pulses here, if you're really feeling spry, inhale, straighten the legs. Exhale, take a squat. Inhale, stand up. Exhale, squat down. Inhale, rise. Exhale, lower. Inhale, rise. Exhale, lower, hold. Scoop your tailbone under. Push your head back. There you go. As you exhale, put the hands flat on the ground. Step your left foot back, followed by your right. Squeeze your inner thighs together for plank pose. Push-ups. One, down, and up, down, 
and up for two, down, and up for three, down, and up for four, knees down, forearms down, look forward, inhale, full breath, pull yourself through, exhale, out of there, downward facing dog. Nice job, everybody. Let's see what the other side has to offer. Inhale, sweep your left leg up to the sky. Point through the toes, find a bit more length. Push into the hands, really get the whole body engaged. Exhale, step your left foot outside of your mat and outside of the left hand. Softly put the right knee down and just find that gentle flossing of your hips. Straightening the left leg, bending the left knee, sending the hips forward, sending the hips back. Letting your breath settle, feeling the heat start to build. No, that's what's happening for me. I can feel the temperature kind of starting to rise with the elements we're working today. Next time you rock forward, pause. Okay, notice what your pelvis is doing. Take the center of your pelvis, bring it down and forward. Take your blocks if you're using them, put them under your hands. Otherwise your hands are both on the inside of your left leg, nice and firmly planted. Tuck your right toes under, lift your right knee up. This is kind of your base position. Notice what happens when you sit back in your right heel and then push your right heel forward because it'll send your head forward. Take a breath in and as you exhale, bend your arms and lower your chest down. As you breathe in, straighten your arms. As you breathe out, bend, straighten, bend, straighten, bend and lower, straighten and rise. Drop your right knee to move your blocks out of your way. Plant your right hand underneath your right shoulder, wrap that elbow in, spin your left leg behind you, peel your chest open to the left, squeeze your left glute, reach your left hand up, eye gaze follows your left thumb, point your left toes, push your hips forward, pull your head back. Nice. Your exhale controls the step forward of your left leg. Put your left hand down. Tuck your right toes under. Step your right foot up. Bend your knees. Drop your butt. Roll your knees out. Come into your active squat. Straighten the legs on that exhale. Inhale, pull your hands up, look up. Exhale, sit back into your strong, active squat. Find a little mo momentum up and down. And if you want to, take some squats. Inhale, straighten the legs, stand up firm. Exhale, bend your knees, sit it low. And repeat the process. Inhale to stand, exhale to lower, stand, lower. Next time you come down, stay down. Put your hands down, step your right foot back, followed by your left. Put your knees down, shift your weight forward, down and up, down and up. Two more, down and up, down and up. Drop your hips back, reach your hands forward, spread your knees apart. If you got a belly or you got some big ass thighs like I do, and then come into child's pose. Three to five breaths here. Starting to draw that energy in. Letting yourself focus on the work that you just did. I told you this is gonna be kind of a heat driven practice. So I want you to feel that heat, welcome it in. Tell it to come on in and have tea.
You ain't scared of it. You want it here because it's going to help better you. It's going to burn away the impurities, which is going to open you up to more possibilities. Because see, when you let go of the baggage that's been holding you back, you make space for the future you don't know about yet. All right, from your child's pose. Rock forward to tabletop, slide your toes under, lift your hips, come on into your dog pose. Good work, good, good work. Take an inhale, sweep your right leg up to the sky, look up at your right thumb, really reach the right foot forward. Shift your weight forward, draw your right knee into your right tricep or as high up as it'll go, see if you can touch it. And then inhale, straighten it back behind you. Point your toes here the whole time. Exhale, pull the heel in towards the butt, Bring the knee forward towards the try. Touch. Take it back. Third time's a charm. It's going to be forward and through. Come forward. Shift forward. Step. Right foot up near your right thumb or where it once was. Beautiful job. Look at your left foot. Wiggle your left toes slightly back. Notice what you did before when you set back in your left heel. So peel your left heel up towards the ceiling. Get that buoyancy push into the right big toe drop your hips down reach your hands up stack your shoulders over your hips finding your crescent lunge active and strong take another breath in as you exhale bring your hands to your heart and lower your left knee to the ground like you're just going to kneel down and maybe you do like i just did but if you let it hover you don't get that spicy out of it. Inhale, rise up the crescent. Avoid the tendency to straighten the front knee. Exhale, lower down. Inhale, crescent lunge. Exhale, lower down. Inhale, crescent lunge. Push off of that left big toe. Reach your hands forward. Pull your hands into your heart. Catch your weight in your right leg. Use your left foot as a lever and then shift your weight forward, picking up your left leg, reaching your head forward, coming into this kind of bent leg warrior three. As you exhale, straighten, lift, find space as you hinge over your hips. Keeping the left leg straight and strong. Inhale, rise, sweep it through, toes, Graze the mat as you step the left foot to the front of your mat. Take one step back with your right. So you're set up almost like pyramid pose. If you need to, take a breath or two. Lord knows. I do. So it's okay. <laughs> Keep your left big toe planted nice and firm. Reach your hands up and overhead. As you exhale, bend your right knee and lower your chest towards your left thigh. Come down until you feel a stretch in your left hamstring. Then inhale, straighten everything, rise back up. So the bend is now happening in the right knee. As you exhale, bend the right knee, shift the weight forward, push the hips back behind you. Inhale, stand up. Last time, exhale, then inhale, rise up, beautiful work. Reposition your right foot kind of more forward towards the front of your mat. If you stepped it back, shift your weight in your right leg, pick up your left, hover it off the ground, hinge at your waist, pass through your warrior three, put your left toes onto the mat, bend your right knee, Come on up to your crescent lunge. Bring your thumbs to the back of your neck. Push your head into your hands. Look up. Reach your elbows higher. Drop the center of your pelvis lower. Exhale, put your hands down to frame your front foot. Sweep your right leg up to the sky. Look forward towards the front of your mat. Pull yourself through and up into upward facing dog. Tuck your toes. Come on back. Meet downward facing dog. <sighs> 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 
moving right on into the other side. Sweep the left leg high. Exhale, left knee, left tricep as your weight shifts forward. Touch. Inhale to straighten. Exhale forward and touch. Inhale to straighten. Exhale forward and touch. Step. Ooh. Nice job. Set the leg strong. Now, if you need a shorter stance, cool, that's fine. We're still going to do the lowering of the knee, though, trying to put that strength work in the legs. Reach your hands up in a crescent lunge. Beautiful. As you exhale, lower your right knee down. As you inhale, find your crescent lunge again. As you exhale, cycle again down. Prepare to shift your weight. Find your warrior three. Obviously, my practice space is a little snug, so I have to make some adjustments, but you should be here, somewhat here. If the knee is bent, straighten it, lift out of there. Point the right toes, pick them up a little more. Sweep the right leg all the way through. Put it down in front of you. Take a step back if you need to. Breath in, reach your hands up. As you breathe out, bend your left knee, lower your chest down. Inhale, straighten your left leg, stand up, creating this stretch through the hamstring. Exhale, bend the knee. Inhale, rise. Keep your right big toe down on the ground. Exhale, bend the knee, because it's naturally going to want to roll open. Inhale, stand on up. Exhale, hands to heart center. Beautiful job. Step your left foot forward if you need to. You got to go back to your warrior three from here. So begin to engage your left glute and left leg. Pick up your right leg. Point the toes as you bow your chest and head forward. Finding your warrior three as a transition. Toes down, back of your mat. Crescent lunge, re-enter your space. Open up through the back bend, create the arc of the spine. Drop the head back. Push the hands into the head, point the elbows up. Keep the hips low. Open up through the right psoas. Open your arms behind you. And then exhale, put your hands all the way down. Sweep your left leg up to the sky. Three-legged dog, look forward. Inhale, pull yourself through. Exhale, downward facing dog. Told you to grab water, so if you need some, now's the time to do that. Take inventory of the body, see where you feel, what's going on. The pace, the elements, the practice, it's all meant to challenge us, even me. I put these things together and they're still challenging. It doesn't matter where you are. What matters is you stay in it. You make the active choice to continue to move and to breathe. Because that's what life requires. If you have pressure coming down on you, life requires you to respond to that. And so, there's lots of ways to respond to it. So I ask you, what are the ways that you're going to choose? As we begin to move into this next part of our practice, down dog is where we're going to be at. Inhale, sweep your right leg up to the sky, big and long behind you. Exhale, step your right foot forward. Spin your left heel down. Look at your right heel and your left arch. See if they can, I don't know, get close to each other. Pull your left hand behind you. Reach your right hand forward. Look forward. 
Come into your warrior two. Make a nice strong fist here as you push everything away from you. Sternum presses forward, arms squeeze together and pull back. Drop the center of your pelvis a little more. Set your focus strong. Nice. As you exhale, windmill your left hand all the way down to the ground. Let it touch. Drop your left knee. Or roll to the outer edge of your left foot. Open up the side plank in its full variation or into its modification. Look up towards the right corner of your mat. Lift your right leg if it isn't already. Step it back to where it came from. Put your right foot down. Spin your right chest towards the ground. So you're back into that kind of lizard shape. Pick up your left knee and spin your left heel down. Plant your right arm on your right thigh. Peel your left shoulder open. Take your left glute, pull it in. So it drops your pelvis forward. Let your knee track slightly forward, your right knee track forward. Lift up through your left quad. Reach your left hand straight up. Look up at your left hand. Reach your left hand forward. Maybe pick up your right arm. Find that space for intensity purposes. If you don't want this, don't do this. Straighten your right leg. As you same time, sweep your hands back so your left hand tracks down your left leg and your right hand reaches up. Right leg is nice and straight though. Lengthen down through your tailbone. Drop your low ribs. Pull your navel in and up. Look up at your right thumb. As you exhale, let your right hand come down onto your right shin. You can even grab a block here. Don't try to go too low. Everybody tries to go too low. You end up sticking your butt way out. And my goal is to keep all this in as much as you can. I like looking down here. Some people like looking up in their triangle pose. It's really up to you. Nice job. As you exhale, let your left hand start to come down. Bring your left foot in a little bit, just enough. Maybe catch your block in your right hand. We're taking a half moon here. Shift your weight forward. Peel your chest open again. Pick up your left leg. Flex your left toes. Really squeeze and engage them. And find that twist. That twist, maybe the gaze looks forward. Or towards the left, I should say. Or straight down. You exhale, close everything off. Step your left foot back. Reach your right foot up to the sky really long. Three-legged dog. Exhale, right knee to tricep. Hold it. Ekapada Kundinyasana. Bend your arm. Straighten your right leg. Five, four, three, two, one. Right foot meets left. Push up. Drop your knees. Drop your forearms. Pull yourself through, upward facing dog. Take yourself back, downward facing dog. Left leg up to the sky. 
As you exhale, step your left foot all the way through. Spin your right heel down. Try to line those up as best as you can. Pull your right arm back. High warrior two. Open up into that warrior two. Make fists and punch away. Once you punch away, pull your arms back. Bring your pelvis a little lower. Tuck your chin in. Rotate your chin so that it meets your left shoulder. Look forward. As you exhale, windmill your hands all the way down. Bring your right arm down. Spin and rotate onto the outer edge of your right foot. As you stack your left, pick up your left hand. Find your side plank. Look to the front of the mat. Step your left foot back there again. Give it a hand if you need to. Prepare for extended side angle. Start by having your left arm on your left thigh. You could use your block as well. Find your rotation, reach your right arm up. Put your gaze, put your vision where you're going. Reach your right hand forward. Pick up both arms if you're taking that variation. Big inhale, everything straightens. Left leg straightens, right hand journeys down right thigh. Left arm comes up and over. Chin tucks right near the upper part of your left arm. Trikonasana. So slide your right hip back. Notice how I did that kind of slide back motion. Left hand comes onto that block of that shin. And then you can find the opening that serves you best. Keep your left big toe grounded. Keep your breath soft. In this work, you're still gonna find, you'll still find in this work, the balance point, the part of the practice, where you can be still, everything moves around you. Let the right hand come down if you need to. We're moving into half moon, so. Make any adjustments, flex your right toes, really squeeze through your right glute, push your hips to the right. Take your right hand up. Use your body to help you. Keep your breath steady. Don't be afraid to shake. Close everything off. Right hand comes down. Move your block out the way if you're using it. Take your left hand up to the sky. As you exhale, bring your left knee to your left tricep. Bend your arms to make your shelf. Shift your weight forward. Lift up your right leg if you can. Not for me today. Hang on for five. For four. For three. For two. For one. Left leg steps back. Take a push up. Drop your knees and forearms. Pull yourself through the up dog. Tuck your toes. Find downward facing dog. Look forward towards your hands. Lift your heels and bend your knees. Step, step, hop, hop, float, float. Come to the front of your mat in a fold. I want my blocks because I want some relief. <laughs> this practice is 
doing its job. <sighs> Bend the knees, drop the hips, shift the weight into the fronts of the feet. <sighs> Just come into your fold, tuck your chin so that the center of your head points down. And breathe. Take an inhale for a half lift. Exhale, fold again. Move your blocks out the way. Big inhale, sweep the arms all the way up and overhead. Exhale, bring the hands to heart center. Starting with your right leg supporting you. We're gonna take some balance work. We're gonna do, we start off with the figure four shapes. So, I'm turning to face you so you can kind of see what I want you to do. Take your left leg crossing on top of your right, sit into your hips a little bit. And you can just hang out here for five solid breaths. If you want a little movement, straighten your leg. Exhale, bend your knees, sit down. So it's like a one-legged squat. Oh, if you fall out like I just did, put yourself back into it. You'll do five of those. So you're, it's a five-second hold, or it's five reps. Your choice. Nice job. Uncross the leg. As you uncross the leg, keep the left leg floating. Or you're gonna find that same hinge from your warrior three. Step your left toes to the back of the mat. As they touch down, push into your right leg so it straightens. Wiggle your feet back. So you get a little distance from one another. Send your arms out nice and long. Squeeze and make fists, punch away. Pick your right toes off the ground and push your right heel down for a very active split. The wider the legs, the lower the hips, the harder this gets. If you need more of a challenge at this point. Hang on for three, for two. It's like you're holding a big steering wheel. For one, and you're going to steer it all the way to the left. Turn it coming into a Y-legged kind of star shape. Cool. Push your head back, lift your chin, look up. Move from your hips first, send your butt back. Fold down the middle. Feel your hamstrings catch you, bring your hands all the way down. Lift up through your quads, soften through the back of your legs. Relax. Nice and steady. Nice job. Walk hand over hand to the front of your mat. Drop your left knee down. Send your hips back. Catch a block if you got one nearby. Come into a half split. Pull your toes towards your face. Push your right heel down and imagine that you're dragging it across your mat. Force your left hip to go forward. Hands on your block so you have a bit of lift. Lift up through your quad so you can stretch a bit more through your hamstrings of the right leg. Squeeze your left glute and press things forward and down. If you can learn to let softness in 
when things are hard. If you can find stillness when things are loud. And if you can find kindness in the midst of anger and frustration, then you're on your way. You're on your way to being a better person for yourself and a better person for the rest of us. Put your right foot flat on the mat. Nice job. Beautiful work. Move your blocks out of the way. Shift your weight forward. Tuck your left toes directly behind the right so you're crossing at the legs. Stand up. All the way up. <sighs> Let your right arm catch your left wrist. And then just lean over to the right, creating a bit of a side body stretch. <sighs> Come back to center. Uncross the legs. <sighs> so that you end up standing at the front of your mat again. You have one final thing to do standing up. If you're still in this, and it's burning and you're tired and you want to quit. This is when I need that last rep, right? To go from good to great isn't a far stretch. It's usually one more thing. It's just a smidge more, but you don't want to do it because you've done good. You've done enough. Hell, you've done more than most, but you're going to do it today. Pick up your right leg for me. Cross it over the left, sit into your hips, Five second hold or five squats, your choice. Chest up if you're holding, head back. Weight evenly spread in the left foot. If you're moving, you should have already been on three or four by now. Nice. Straighten the left leg. Pick up the right, pull the right heel in. Send the leg back at the same time you reach the chest forward. Drop the toes softly, straighten the left leg. Wobble, that's fine. Set your foundation. Determine your distance. Get your legs strong. Push down through your left heel. Pick up your left toes. Drive through the ball of your right foot. Pick up your right heel. Balance on those two points. Draw your navel in and up. Stabilize your center. Reach your arms in opposition. Hold on. Three. Hold on. Two. Hold on. One. Spin it to the right. Ta-da. Star pose. Up. Bow. Let it all go. Come all the way down to that wide-legged forward fold tripod headstand if you want it hands in line with each other spread the feet wide enough to get the crown down and once you do squeeze the legs take them up take a wide shape close them down open them up put them down Pick your head up. Shift your weight forward into the balls of the feet. Lift up through your quads one more time. Give me two more breaths. You're doing so good. Walk hand over hand to the left. Drop your right knee down. If you haven't started to get softer with yourself, now's your time. If you've been saying rough words to get you through this, I want you to drop them. Start affirming how good you are, how strong you are. Have you come this far in your practice? And that you're capable that you're willing and able. 
that you can do hard shit like my shirt says because you can you've always been able to maybe someone led you to believe otherwise but the reality is what do they know Bring your left foot flat on the mat. Move your blocks out to the side of your mat and wiggle your right left toes all the way over to the right side of your mat so that you can drop your left shin down. As your left shin comes down, reach your right foot long behind you. Coming into pigeon pose. Let's stretch out some of what we've been doing. I don't want you to sink into your pigeon in the Katona language, in the dialogue, we talk about how we can sometimes drown in our own waters. So we get all loose as a noodle and we drop things down. I don't need that right now. Get your blocks, put your hands on them. Let the center of your pelvis drop. Find that arc in your spine, push down through the top of your right foot. Beautiful, start to bring your right knee in. And as you do, pull your left knee towards your right till they tuck up together again, like they know each other. Welcome back to Gomukhasana part two. Sit your hips back, Just keep sitting them back. Use your blocks for support and sit on down. With the legs crossed, you come into Gomukhasana. <sighs> squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Use your blocks to find a bit of lift. If your legs are really tight like mine are, the blocks give me space, right? So I'm not drowning in my own water so that I can breathe a little bit fuller, a little bit taller. A little bit better. Nice job. Walk your hands forward to get out of here. Walk your right leg back. Sink down into your left hip for me. Take your legs wide to a straddle, facing the right side of your mat. Bring your blocks in if you got them. You don't need them, like I said, but it's nice to get some support as we finish out the practice. It can feel good to close things off in this way. Bring your forearms down, bring your chest forward. Drop your chin, drop your gaze. come off of your blocks we're going to take pigeon you're going to be facing the back of your mat so we're just basically shifting our direction start to bring your left knee in bring your right foot in lift off of your hips so that you can bring your right shin a little more forward your left leg gets a little longer behind you your blocks give you a little lift as you kind of find pigeon here on the opposite leg I have to adjust. My right side's a little weird. So I need to see what I like, what I don't like. There, that's better. That feels like it's doing its job. Sometimes we have to do that. You need to do that. I encourage you to do that. If you're not making time to readjust your practice and your posture and your poses to fit your body, you're doing it wrong. Your goal isn't to look like me. It's to try what I'm doing, but make it fit you.
And you only know that if you listen. Try to bring your right knee back and your left knee forward till they meet up again. If you have sensitive parts that need to be adjusted, please do that. <laughs> Otherwise, you might find out too late that it's uncomfortable. Sit back. Right knee is crossed on top of the left for Gomukhasana. If you're like me and you're using blocks, bring them slightly behind you so it forces your pelvis to come forward a little bit. Squeeze your thighs together. And start your counting of breath once you get into the posture. So we're five breaths here, but that's after you get there. Get set up. Nice. Sit back in the heels, uncross the legs. Send the feet out in front of you. Nice and wide, nice and long, nice and wide. That's funny. That's not what I meant. <laughs> As you uncross the legs and send them out in front of you, you kind of hear in this um, Paschimottanasana. That's the shape or seated forward fold or kind of Dandasana or seated staff pose, I should say. Rambling at this point. We've been here for a minute, y'all. Good work today. If I haven't told you already, you're awesome. Keep being awesome. Fuck what anybody else says. Like, keep showing up for yourself. If you know what works for you, then listen to yourself. Learn to believe yourself. And stay beautiful. All right. We're going to lie down. Ah, uh, lie on back. I just realized, like, this is the first time today we lie down. I just had us working. It's good stuff, though. Lie back. Drop the legs. Let the arms hang out for just a moment. We're not going to go to Shavasana just yet. We're just going to take an inventory real quick. the chest catch the outer edges of your feet point your bottom of your feet up to the ceiling and pull with the strength of your arms for happy baby now often your tailbone rolls off of the ground I want you to roll it down tuck your chin a little more Always playing these opposites. Your tailbone wants to roll up. You want to roll it down, but it's forcing you to kind of push a little more. It's a recalibration. What I said at the beginning of practice, balance is a place you visit. It's not a place you stay. Bring your feet together. Hold on to your right shin by interlacing your fingers and catching onto your right shin or your right knee. Lay your left leg flat. Cross your body. As your right knee comes over to the left, I don't care if it touches the ground. Let your right arm open up. And work your twist. Play your opposites. Pull the right knee down. Pull the right shoulder down. Let it soften. Let it extend or pull. Let it soften. Come on back to center for me. Uh. 
Great work, great work. You have one more slide. Pull your left knee into your chest. Give yourself a gentle hug. Lift your shoulders up. Reposition yourself as you need to. Put your right leg straight down. Hold on to your left shin. Pull it in. Take your left hand long. Roll your right, your right, left knee over to the right. I'm not going to go too far. My mic pack is there. and I don't want to have to mess with that. But you get the gist. Roll into your twist. Come back to center. Pull your knees into your, both knees into your chest. Take your legs straight up. And you can hang out here for just a moment. If you want to do a plow pose, stay looking up to protect your cervical spine and to keep it nice and long. Start to lift your hips up and put your hands under your low back for a bit of support. Plow pose drops the feet forward so it's a forward fold but upside down, right? With a little support on the low back. Let the hands come down, the legs come down. All things down. Close your eyes. Drop your arms, drop your legs. There is a letting go. That's why Shavasana is called corpse pose. Because here we're dying to the practice, regardless of what challenge it presented or whatever came up from before. This ain't that. It's over with. Those moments are gone. The only thing that will remain is what you choose to hold on to. So as you come into your Shavasana, your end of practice, is there anything worth holding on to from the practice that you just did? And I measure what I should hold on to by is it helpful and is it kind? Because if it's neither, then you probably don't need to hold on to it. Take a breath in, and then softly exhale, let it go. Take a breath in and then softly let it go. <sighs> softly take a breath in and slowly let it go.
roll over to your left or your right side slowly. Start to bring yourself up to a seat. As you come to a seat, close your eyes. You've seen the various parts of yourself in your practice, the changing conditions of the moment, the feelings, the sensations, the breath, the thoughts, all of it coming and going. As you sit here in this space, you continue to observe with closed eyes these subtle elements moving through you. Your breath, the temperature of your skin, the sounds in, your, in the room. the raw elements that make up your day-to-day -day experiences. All of them will shift and change if left alone. So I ask you as you move throughout your day, Try to hold as little of them as you can. Let them pass through you. Let them be like water. Let them be like breath. Don't damn them up. Don't collect stuff that holds you back from bringing the best version of yourself. You can stay here for as little or as long as you need. But I would like to tell you, thank you for being in practice with me today. And I look forward to seeing you on the mat soon. Be well.